Thanks for tuning in to your day off podcast, hosted by your boys, Corey and Tony. I think by the end of today, I might have another best friend. They're committed to making you fall in love with the hair industry, one podcast at a time. Uh, you're going to grab a lot of information. Yeah, you're going to learn a lot. Presented by Hair Industry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Your day off podcast will begin after a word from our sponsors. Sitting with my best friend Tony. What's up, buddy? What's happening, brother? At, at the end of this conversation, I don't know if you're still going to be my best friend. I might pick up a new one. Um, um, but... dude, you got a, a, a be- new best friend every week. <laughs> that, that, that's fair, but actually, you know, I'm a little scared because I think like uh, I, I might lose you as a best friend. Like you like you like that's the truth. That's the truth, right? <laughs> um, hey, so uh, I just want to take this opportunity um, once again to uh, remind everybody that Pressy Poe and Friends is happening April 13th. Go to PressyPoeandFriends.com um, and check out all the uh, all the details there uh real quick we we kind of have to say this every year and every year i wish i had a better way to say it but um you uh it, it's an a la carte weekend so you know you can come saturday you don't have to come sunday or you can come sunday you don't have to come saturday um all of our artists are doing classes so um you can sign you can look at pressy post for the ultimate experience you know do both you can uh, definitely check out the reviews check out ask people who've done it it's uh it's a life changer and game changer and uh you will definitely leave uh with uh not only yeah a full cup i love that full cup yeah you know so uh we 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 try to do it all for you um it's definitely an event it's not a show it's not what you're going to get any anywhere else i promise you that um we uh purposefully bring the best educators in the country together and um you know and they get to share with you and then on sunday um all those guys uh will uh will well we'll go down the list real quick and then we'll bring in our guest um we of course we have pressy poe that's going to be there we have hair does rima rima does this cadu cut that she's teaching um uh both on saturday night and uh on, on sunday well she's going to go over it saturday night and then sunday she's going to get into a lot of detail with it we've got the amazing ira pope sage if you haven't seen iris cutting it's it's next worldly um we have our dear friend olivia smalley thompson um she's always olivia smalley to me sorry olivia um omg artistry she's gonna be there she's teaching some blonding techniques and then the next day which i'm really excited about and the and the ticket is pretty inexpensive too um she's doing a social media class dude if you're in hair school if you're starting off in your career if if social means anything to you absolutely positively don't miss her you don't have to be young even if you're trying to enhance your social game this, this is the game yeah, for sure. And, and and she's like, she doesn't, there's no, it's hard to explain, but she just tells you exactly what you need to do or, or, or what needs to be done, I should say. And then we have uh, Jamie Wiley there. Um, and uh, Jamie, she uh, she's teaching an editorial class. Um, and it's incredible. She's bringing in a photographer and a makeup artist. So uh, you take her class, and you're gonna have like uh, like like images ready to to. You can enter them into Naha. You can enter them into anything. Um, but they it also be good for social. Yeah, they will have to go and to then the on. Um, and then on. And then we have uh, opening up the show. We have Los Cuts it. You know, for coming all the way down from Chicago, and then he's teaching some classes too. Yeah, and, and we're going to miss our boy, uh, Reggie Marcel. Unfortunately, he was in an accident, and so he had to pull out. But he's in – there's a GoFundMe page. Go to uh, go go to our uh, Instagram, and you'll see um, – Put up the GoFundMe. Yeah, we put up the GoFundMe. You know, in this industry, you know, we, I mean, he, he's just an amazing person. So if, if you have an opportunity to go help this guy out – uh, he's uh he supports his family. He needs uh he needs all of us uh to get together to kind of back him up. He um he I mean he really got hurt. So, uh, Reggie, you're in our prayers, brother. We love you. And uh you know like we said before, once family, always family. And uh, we're gonna support you, bud. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for that, Tom. Thanks for the reminder. Um, and then once again, a babeless. Pro is uh, is supporting the uh, is supporting the show um uh this this year. So once again, en- enough about that. Uh, Pressypoeandfriends dot com. All the information is there. So uh, our guest today was introduced to us from our our, our dear dear friend Maria, and I always mess up her last name. Go, you're uh, up. I'm, 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 I'm not. 
<laughs> Bada bees, That's not my game. <laughs> <laughs> so Maria, uh, Pink Pewter, we did an event with them back in September, um, and uh, and we were able to uh, meet our guest today. We actually, from the moment we met him, we're like, we got to bring him on the podcast. So it's just uh, we just got to make the time. You know, like th- there's few people in life that when you when you meet them and or you hear about them, the the impact that they they have of, with on the people around them. And, and and dude, it, this is one of them. Yeah, he's like he's such an amazing individual. I mean, there's so much depth to this guy, and I can't wait to really kind of like really sink into him and uh, really just see what tick what makes him tick. Well, you know, I I think in life there's talkers and there's doers, and, and I think that our guest today is definitely a doer because certainly long before we ever met him, um, he he has been in the community of doing and doing for the community. So, anyways, I want to get in. Um, so our guest today is Larry Roberts. Um, if you don't know Larry, Larry's going to give you all the details about how you can follow him and all that. Um, I think it's just Larry, but whatever. We'll get into it. Um, but listen, Larry's a very interesting dude, doing some incredible stuff for for our community as a whole. Um, you know, not just the hair community, but just like community like of the world of, of, of like you know to be to be better americans and to be better people just good world. people yeah so let's get on let's go go ahead and get on in mr larry roberts welcome to your day off tony and Corey, what's up how y'all doing amazing oh, last brother yeah thank you so much for making time for us man for real i really appreciate you guys having me on the show i really i don't take it for granted well th- well thank you very much so larry where are you from i'm from chicago illinois Born and raised? Born and raised Chicago, Illinois. But I have traveled all over the world now, but no place like Chicago when it's summertime. I don't like the winter time. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's like winter nine months out of the year. Then, right? <laughs> man, man, summertime only for me. I tell you, dude, I, the coldest I was was in March in like Chicago a few years ago. Woo! They still had like like 10 foot dunes on, on, the, on Lake Michigan there or, or whatever that lake i mean we we went in there to on the beach and literally the dunes were so high you couldn't even see the water oh the ice dunes yeah yeah that's so crazy you're crazy okay, like 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 really y'all coming for y'all coming for chicago like that there's no place like chicago now come on it's with respect because there's no nah, I'm only kidding. there's no disrespect for chicago there's only fear of chicago and mainly it's wet. <laughs> Yeah. Man, Ooh. Wow. Chicago, man, we love. We did the Windy city. Yeah, we 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 enjoy Chicago a lot. We actually we go usually two or three times a year, uh, and uh, see our boy Ben, Mariah, ABS. We'll be at ABS this year. Okay, uh, I'll be yeah. there. Awesome. Well, we got to connect. We got to cut up. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Larry, how did you find the hair industry, Larry? Um, through um. You talking about you guys, or are you talking about uh, no. you, you, the how, industry, the hair industry? Finding, okay, yeah. okay. I just wanted to make sure because you know the hair industry, right? So I found the hair industry. Um, my parents always say that you know they had my dad had this lame brain idea about building a house out in the south suburbs when I was younger. Um, and there was nobody that looked like me who could cut my hair and give me a service, right? Um, at least that I was comfortable with. So I went to Walgreens. Bought a pair of clippers for nineteen dollars and ninety nine cent, and I always say the rest is history. But one of the key things about me is is that I have great penmanship and I'm an artist, right? I know how to draw very well. So if anything, if anybody know anything about the hair industry, being a barber is an art and it's a science because we have to carve and we have to, you know, line up and be creative and be artistic. So it was in a it was in a line with what I do already, and I just took it, man, and and perfected it to the best of my ability. And that's how I got into the hair care industry. How old were you, Larry? I was 13 years old. I was 13 years old. Yep, 13 when I started cutting hair. I started cutting my own hair, which I still do to this day. Um, I've been cutting hair 37 years. I'm going on 38 years I've been cutting hair. I've been in business for 31 years. I went to barber school when I was 17 years old. I had a full-fledged barbershop in my parents' basement with another guy. I had two chairs in my basement when I was a teenager with another guy cutting hair with me on the side of me in my parents' basement when I was a teenager. I went to barber school at 17. I had a half a day because I had all of my credits pretty much when I was a senior in high school, and I opened up my first barbershop with the money I saved 
when I was 19 years old. And I started off charging three bucks for a haircut and I went up to five bucks for a haircut. What? That's yep. crazy. And your mom yep. dad had to been like like proud like that. Yeah. You know, but see, I get my I get my entrepreneurial um, you know, from my dad. So my dad used to have restaurants when I was young. So I used to literally work 40, 50, 60 hours a week in my dad's restaurants. I um I just posted the black history thing this morning where I started barbecuing ribs at 12 years old. I used to get on the stool on my knees because I was too short to get up on the pit and barbecue ribs. And that's where I get my, you know, my um, business ethics from my dad and sweat equity part of it. So I just carried it on into what I really love doing, which is the hair care industry. But, you know, guys know I'm a professional musician as well. So I've traveled the world playing, you know, drums and keyboards, songwriter, but it, I was able to cut people's hair on tour as well. So I just kind of multitask or whatever. So that's how I started cutting hair. See, that's the importance of having a father because I grew up without a father and my cousin, he grew up with a father, right? So mm -hmm. he, 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 he learned that work, that sweat equity, that work ethic. And when he was 17, uh, he, he was working full time and, and, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't get that. Right. So I was a late bloomer. I got in a lot of trouble as a kid. Um, I didn't really hit, hit my stride probably till like my early twenties. Uh, okay. and, and you know, and, that was just because I had a either I'm going to go this route and it, it's been the rest of my life probably in prison or try to get my act together. And thank God I met my wife who at the time uh, really kind of helped me change, um, you know, and, and my and my mom always praying for me that helped too. So, oh, great. But, um, yeah. I mean, that's important as well. You know, I mean, I, my dad, you know, he's a bishop. He just retired pastor. I didn't want to take it over, you know, even though I'm qualified, but I didn't want to take my dad's church over. But my grandmother was the pastor being born and raised in church, you know, that I feel like that. And I don't care, you know, who, you can be Buddhist, Catholic, Muslim, Christian, whatever, man. You know, I just feel like it's about loving one another. It's about getting out here, working hard or whatever. God is God. And as long as somebody are teaching you good you know, ethics and, and you have good attributes to, to, you know, impart on the people. That's all that matters. So I think that that's, you know, that's very, that's very good. I think the church brings community, right. And it's community outside of the family and it brings it, what it does, it creates a larger, like a larger community for the community, you know, and, absolutely. And, and I think that that th those are the takeaways, like you said, whether it's Buddhist, whether it's whatever, if it's an organization that, that that's striving for one thing, you know, absolutely, absolutely. Up, you know, so that yeah, you know, that's where it is. Uh, barbecue. So, that, so that's how I started cutting, guys. And you know, I mean, I don't want to get ahead of you guys, but no, 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 we're good. Um, yeah, but you know, I started doing that, and I just seen something. I just really seen something big in it, right? You know, understanding that the hair care industry is a five hundred and forty-seven billion dollar industry, and people don't take us serious, right? So why don't people take us serious? So with me doing everything that I'm doing. You know, my job is to make sure that people take us serious is why I'm doing things that I'm doing the way I'm doing it. But how did you but how did you go from, you know, you open up your first barbershop at 19, uh, focusing on a business to to expand your vision to to. Like talking about the uh, the five hundred forty billion dollar industry that you're going to try to take care of the industry. It's right. hard enough to, to to focus on your own business as it is. Mm -hmm. Well, um, so because of the fact that I feel like somebody needed to teach it, right? And I'm not sure if you guys really understand. Do you understand what warfare is? Like the word warfare? Well, let's, let's explain let's cut it up. Yeah. Okay. So warfare basically is it's almost like the same. Whenever you try and do good, evil is always present, right? So it's like you try and be this good person. You know, but then something always trying to trying to block you, right? So with that being said, because I have a genuine heart, like so so you're talking to a guy, you know, and I don't I'm I can pass judgment on nobody. Like I'm nobody's judge. You know, as adults, you do what you choose, but you know, I, I've never drank, I've never smoked, I've never gotten high, you know, I've never used drugs, I've never did none of the above, right? That's my life. I'm 50 years old. I'll be 51 this year, right? So with that, I eat healthy. You know, I still play ball. I go to the gym. I play all kinds of sports. I do all of these things. So for me, that helped me to be uh, a good, genuine guy for me, right? I can't speak for nobody else. So 
all things. And my parents taught me these things, you know, taught me how to be a good steward. You know, I always talk about gift and character. We have to be careful. We don't allow our gift to take us someplace that our character, that our character can't handle. And the thing about it is, is that warfare creeps in because I'm trying to do good. I have a good heart. I'm trying to do good. I'm trying to teach people how to really get out here and be successful in this industry. But whether it's people being jealous and envious or you can't you can't get loans from the bank or you can't get, you know, from financial. So it can be very, very discouraging. And it, it made me feel like like I dealt with suicide before, you know, like I, I've written two books. I've dealt with suicide. You know, I got molested as a baby. You know, all of these things played a part in in me becoming and being who I am today. You know, learning not to be judgmental, not you know, understanding that you don't know somebody's story. So when you don't know somebody's story and you see them, it's almost like, man, you're 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 judging them. But you you don't know that I went through the things that I went through. Right. They just look at the success. And you know, they always say you see the you see the glory, but you don't know the story. And that's me. Like people don't know what I had to endure. They don't know what I had to go through. You know what I'm saying? So the warfare is so extreme. And because it's so extreme, it's made me want to quit. It made me want to give up and say, man, screw everybody else, screw everything else. Let me just do what I need to do for me. But I just know that I couldn't allow the enemy, you know, to come in and stop me for what I know that I need to do for the world and give my little two cents to the world, man. So, man, I'm I'm, I'm trying to do it, you know, which has allowed me. I have my master instructor license in over 22 states. I have eight schools, you know, with two more coming. I'm the first person in our industry that's going to build a school from the ground. We're breaking ground um, in April, you know. Um, you know, like I, I can go on and on. I got shops inside of Walmart. I got my whole my own hair care um, line. I have a shoe and clothing line. Um, I'm starting a credit union, you know, so we can have our own financial institution for the hair care industry and for the music industry. Why? You know, I'm doing all of these things because I want to be able to spread the love. I want to be able to teach people how to do what it is we do. I want to teach people how to make this money. And when I was talking about the credit union, you know, it's like we don't have ex ex proper ex exit strategies, right? We don't have products for our industry. And the reason I keep saying that music industry as well, because it's the same thing. If you can't sing, if you can't play play your gig, if you can't get on your acts, if you can't cut hair, if you can't do hair, guess what? You can't make no money. You're not making any money. Right. And if you're doing 1099, and if you're not doing W-2, you're not paying into Social Security, federal, state taxes, Medicare. You're not, you know, you don't have a 401k. You don't have life insurance policies. You don't have medical and dental benefits. So I'm doing what I can to do my job to make sure all of us are set. So that way, when we get ready to retire, we have something to retire to. And it stopped being a rat race, you know, but people got to be willing. They got to show up for it. They can't, you know, hate on one another. So the warfare is extreme, man. And I'm literally, you know, trying to I'm, I'm trying to surpass all of that. How does one how does an individual start a credit union, Larry? So you have to be a non-for-profit in order to have a credit union. So I have four corporations. One of my corporations is a non-for-profit. And um, I'm 501c3. I'm tax exempt on my non-for-profit side. So my barber schools are my for-profit um, corporation. But my non-for-profit is something different. So, you know, I have schools. I'm the first person in history to ever put a school inside of a county jail. I've been to county jail now, Cook County Jail now, for 15 years going on. And my name is on the whole entire jail. I'm in three Illinois Department of Juvenile Justice locations. So I'm the only accredited program inside of a state facility here in Illinois. So through my non-for-profit, I do all of that stuff um, totally complimentary. I don't get paid to be there. So basically, um, the non-for-profit um, allows me to be able to open up a credit union. So you have to go through all of these phases. You have to get people who's willing to be members. They have to do, you know, you got to get their bylaws. It's just like a whole laundry list of things that you have to do with the National Credit Union in order to be able to even get to that point. And I've been working on this as long as, you know, you remember when um, Russell Simmons had the rush card? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so that's how long I've been trying to have my own financial type situation because I was trying to do a, a, a like a, a debit card back in the day, a prepaid debit card back in the day, along with, you know, trying to work on, you know, having my own credit union. So I basically have literally um, worked myself to that right now where I've been working strong on that for the last, you know, 
two years or so. There's people that are blessed and highly favored, and you are definitely blessed and highly favored, brother. But people, a lot of times, they hold on to that. He is, right. he's taking his blessings and he's blessing others, man. I, dude, I, my heart is, is, is touched by all the things that you're doing. I appreciate it. Help Thank all you. these people, man. And he brushed over. So you have a school inside the prison systems? Oh, yeah. I've been there for almost 15 years now. Yep. How did and that I come have, about? And, and I'm like, so it came about because, so here's, that's the other thing about Chicago. Now we got, Chicago is great. We got good summers, but we have a lot of violence here as well, right? So some of my businesses have, um, are in and have been in some like really bad neighborhoods. You know, um, you know, I've seen people, you know, get on the live in broad daylight. I've seen it with my eyes. You know, I literally used to, you know, run outside of my shop and stop people from going to get their, their weapons or, you know, from beating people up. So I've seen it all, you know, I used to hire or let the, the, the drug addicts or the alcoholics come in and take my garbage out or, you know, sweep in front of the shop. So I've seen all of it. Right. And understanding that, you know, no one wants to go to jail. No one wants to, you know, uh, uh, be unalive or not be here. Um, before God's time, right? So it's like, what what opportunity are they having to do something different? So I figured like, well, why don't I take what I'm doing inside of the jail? So that way, while they are in there, they can go to school. They'll be my best students because they don't have nothing but time to be good, mm -hmm. great at what they do. And then when they get out of jail, then I can put them straight to work and they can make the same money that they feel like they was making, whether it's selling drugs, whether it's playing the, the credit cards or doing check scams or whatever the case may be. Let me help you so that way you don't have to go back to jail. Let me help you so that way you don't have to go around and trying to unalive somebody or fighting for your life unnecessarily, man, because we have families and you go grow up, you're going to have a family. So I wanted to go inside the jail so I can head them off. So I go to court for the guys. I stand before the judge for the guys. I hire them. I got guys who's working at Walmart for me right now, who's who's ex-cons. Um, and people don't know that you can have a criminal background and get a license, but you just got to go through it. So I have instructors who have worked for me who had to go through the process in order to be able to fight to get their license, but they have them. Barbers who had to fight to get their license, but they have them. So you give them hope. So that's why I wanted to go to the prisons and do it. And everybody think that everybody's locked up in jail are bad people. And that's not the truth. You got people who messed up one time. And when they mess up one time as a youth then they go in jail and it becomes a cycle. So I'm helping to recut down on recidivism so that way people don't have to go back to jail. And with being able to be a professional barber stylist and make six figures, they don't have to do it. But you have to teach them to align their gift and their character. So you can't just give them this great trade, but don't teach them how to say yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am. Good morning, sir. How are you doing today, sir? Pull up your pants, you know, keep yourself groomed. You know, don't, don't, don't smoke on a job. There's so many different things that come along with people minimizing our professionalism that I try and teach through my barber schools, you know, with financial, with financial literacy, um, learning how to start your own corporations and pay your taxes and get insurance. All of these things I learned inside of my, uh, my schools and through my not-for-profit, we do mentoring, life skills, uh, mental health, substance abuse. We deal with the citizen, um, the um, the senior citizens. We deal with the veterans. We do everything through my not-for-profit. So that's how I kind of make everything work along together. But then recently, I started an automotive school of technology because I'm like, hey, these are one of the things that that we need as well. The hair care industry is never going anywhere. But then, you know, HVAC, I got an HVAC school, uh, welding, appliance repair, uh, aviation. I have automotive school of technology because people need cars fixed. They need the HVAC fixed. They need their appliances fixed as well. So I kind of wanted to bleed that into my whole education part of it. And I'm the only school who ever offered, only barber school who ever offered student, student housing. So if somebody want to come from another state, I'm working on building housing from the ground right now in a community center. So if they want to come from, from another state in order to be able to go to school, then they can come and they can live on campus and go to school. So I have shuttle buses, I have vans, I have work vans, I have all of these things that's a part of my whole, you know, you dig. <laughs> so, so so your HVAC and your and your and your automotive are those those aren't in the prison system? Those are separate? So the, the HVAC can, so in a prison system, 
they, of course, they can't have hands on to that. They can have hands on to barbering and cutting hair and stuff like that. But I have a program where I'm going to try and incorporate the automotive school of technology inside of the prison where they can start off on a computer, but then some way, somehow be able to do hands on because you got to think, you know, they're dealing with tools, implements and and stuff like that. So it, it has to be safe, if you will. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that, that's the other part of it. But yeah, yeah, but I'm in I'm an adjunct for the city colleges. So I help the city colleges get schools and I'm a part of the barber and cosmetology school in city colleges here in Chicago, the high schools. I'm also working on opening up a barber school inside of a junior high school right now as well. So they can kind of start off somewhere. And they allow me to proctor proctor the exam inside the um the the um, the state the state um prison system. I can proctor. I'm the only one who can proctor the exam inside of there and send it back to the state. Hey, I, 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 do you have 48 hours in your day? Like like how are you doing all this? I, I I really don't sleep at night. I don't. You know, and my staff. Somebody's sitting here in the office right now. But you know, we used to say I'm in 2030, man. But I feel like I'm in 2040. You know, like I'm just I'm so ahead of the game. And again. I watched my dad. I watched my dad go to sleep for an hour, two hours, man, and get back up and do it all over again because he had he did what he had to do. I seen him make the sacrifices. I seen him voluntarily repo a car because it was more important that 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 he have his businesses and his families was good versus having a nice car. So I watched all of that. I seen all of that. And my mind don't shut off, man. So sometimes I'm up at two or three o'clock in the morning, man, can't sleep because I'm I'm ready for it. You know, I used to start cutting hair literally at four o'clock in the morning. So I would start at four o'clock in the morning. And there were times I wouldn't get done until one o'clock the next morning because I would cut, I was cutting between 25 and 38 heads every day. Um, and I kind of made the choice on how many heads I wanted to cut a day. And the most heads I ever cut one in one day was 48 heads. So I haven't caught up with I, Ivan Zutin, Ivan Zuch yet. Like I'm not, you know, getting his book of world records with that, but you know, and of course, you know, round sale hair is kind of like a different type of degree. But I did used to cut that many heads every day, man. And I ch I pick and choose how many services I wanted to do every day. How do you have according to my schedule? You know, clone me a hundred a hundred of me and still can't accomplish what one. <laughs> oh, I know that's oh crazy. my God! Well, well, I I have an amazing staff. I have to be honest and say you have to hire people who are smarter than you, and you have to hire people who you can trust. Like so. You know, I don't do my payroll. You know, I'm out of that. I have HR department. You know, I have an executive assistant. I have, you know, director of school. So I, I have pretty, pretty much people who's helping me who I, I can't live without. You know, I have, like the guys you talk to, I have a creative arts department. So, you know, I had to call them, hey, send me the link. So I kind of have people who's helping me to stay on task, right? But you still have to align everything. You know, we have an app. We have the websites. We have everything that's needed in order for us to go to the next level. And I'm not where I want to be right now. But I'm not where I used to be. So I'm only trying to go stronger and just trying to get to the next level, man. So I have an amazing staff that I, I couldn't do it without them. I love that quote, by the way. You know, I ain't where I want to be, but I'm better than I was. You know, that's, that's absolutely that's incredible. Larry, how did you like what's the conversation when you and when you're going to the prison system? Like, how do you even find the right people to be like, this is what I want to do? And, and um What's the conversation like to to bring a school into there? Because I, I just find that that's just like, so for everything that you do, like, I find that so responsible, like responsible for, for you know, again, not just for our industry, but for the world as a whole. So that's a great question. And I'm going to tell you why that's a great question, because of the fact that, you know, back in the day, you know, when we started, we didn't have social media and things like that, right? So it was my posture that, that made people trust who I was, the way I lived my life, the way I carried myself, the way I didn't allow my good to be evil spoken of, the way I didn't allow my left hand to know what my right hand was doing and vice versa, right? So not saying that I was trying to be perfect because I'm a very transparent person, as you can tell, but you know, social media now causes a lot of people to, to be misre misrepresented. And what I mean by that is, is that they're on social media, they're doing things that they shouldn't be doing. They're, they're saying things that they shouldn't be saying. Um, their posture just doesn't align with where they're trying to go in their lives. But then they are so worried about people being judgmental and people judging them, but you're putting your business out there to make it where people are deciding, no, nah, 
I want to pass you up, Tony, or no, nah, you know, I want to use Corey or whatever, right? So the way I presented myself and I postured myself made it where people not only came looking for me, but it made it where when I went to people to tell them what I was interested in doing, I made them believers. They were believers because of my track record. They were believers because of the way I ran my shop. They were believers because of the fact of, you know, I didn't have any kind of music playing in my shop or I didn't have all kind of guys standing up in front of my shop and my life lined up to what I was preaching, right? I practiced what I preach, but I wasn't being perfect, right? I, I think our flesh got to die daily. Nobody's exempt from, from, from whatever life could life, you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, I was able to talk to those dignitaries and network and let people know what I was interested in doing. And because of the way I postured my life and because of the way, you know, I was upstanding, they, they, it, it, it made for conversation, you know, okay, well, what is it that you want to do? Well, this is what I want to do. And this is why I want to do it. And this is how I feel like this can work. And a lot of times everything is about a dollar. Everything can't be about a dollar all the time. Had I went in there saying, Hey, I'll do this, but y'all got to pay me this much money. I had to look at the fact that nobody has ever done this before. So what I look like missing out on the opportunity because I'm worried about amount of money when we have people lives and their souls that are more important than amount of money. So I went in there basically with my hands up with as a sign of surrender and said, hey, I want to come in here and let me help, right? Come in there. They let me help. Almost 15 years later, I got my own office inside of the jails. I can take my cell phones inside of the jails because they know I have to do business. I got my own computers and stuff inside the jail. I can go in the women's division. I go all over the men's division, and I'm doing something never, ever done before. And that's how I was able to do that. And I make sure that going in and out that jail, I make sure that they can trust me, right? Because there's, I can take anything up in there. Like I'm the only one that can take clippers in and outside of there. I can take screwdrivers and shears and in and out, in and outside of the jail. But I make sure that I don't uh, fraternize improperly, whether it's with the women, whether it's with the men. I don't do anything I don't have no business doing inside that jail. No contraband that I'm not supposed to have inside of the jail to make it where people are continuing to bring my name up. People are continuing to say that, hey, we can trust this guy, which gives me cara blanche with with the with the sheriff. You know, I can call the sheriff if I need to or the governor, Governor Pritzker or you know, the mayor of Chicago, you know, like so many different, you know, state reps and senators. So it just allowed that. And, and I'm just really grateful. And that's why I say the warfare is so extreme, because what I'm doing I'm doing from a good place. I'm doing it from my heart and I want everybody to win. I've helped people get financial aid at their barber and cosmetology schools. You know, I stop, I, I ride down on everybody. I, I, I make sure I talk to my students. Like I'm not exempt. I'm not, I don't think I'm above the, the rest. God is the head of my life. He's in everything that I do. And, um, and, and I just want everybody to be able to eat, man. It's enough for everybody. So I show myself friendly and I show myself kind you know, to everybody, because that's how I want to be treated back, man. Am I going to continue to get treated like that? Some people, it don't really matter to them, but I'm not going to stop being who I am. So that's how I was able to win my way inside the penal institutions and made it where people from states like Florida and, 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 you know, North Carolina and different people, they want me to put schools, I mean, you know, inside of their penal institutions. And so it, it's, it's really good, man. It's really good. And I'm really trying to you know, set a solid foundation so I can move around and don't move too quickly. Because if I move too quickly and not really have my things properly aligned, then, you know, I could lose. So that's why I believe that all of these years have allowed me to do. I thought that I should have been where I am right now in my 20s, but God didn't see it. So, and I believe that God didn't feel like my gift and character was aligned properly. Was I doing all of the right things? Yes, I was. But I was making so much money at 18, 19, 20 years old until I was changing the rims on my truck like they was underwear. You know what I'm saying? Or <laughs> putting sound, putting sounds in my truck and lowering it to the ground and lifting it up from the ground and you know, 22 credit cards and buying the alligator shoes and having clothes made and spending money unnecessarily. But then, you know, I'm with I'm I'm in the shop on the phone whispering, trying to make payment arrangements for the light bill and for the for the gas bill and the the, the, the landlord coming in and bringing me a five day notice because I, I didn't pay my $1,500, you know, rent, or I got a car that I really couldn't afford. So I'm juggling my car note with the rent 
for the shop because, okay, they won't come repossess my car for 45 days. So I'll Western Union that because I got to pay my rent. You get sick of that rat race, man. You know what I'm saying? So I learned my lessons and I wasn't ready back then. So now I'm ready, man. I'm ready. <laughs> so what would your advice be to a to a young Larry right now that he, that's in his 20s and he and he has the heart? Uh, what, what kind of advice would you give to that guy? Or, or I would say slow. I, I, I would I would say slow down. Stop going so fast. Stop letting YouTube be your dominant teacher because YouTube has misled so many people in this industry until it'll blow your mind. It'll have them think and think they can do things that they really can't do. Right? I'm not saying don't look at it, but you got to eat the fish and spit out the bones. Everything is not good for each individual, right? And I would say just just take your time. You know what I'm saying? And don't don't get in the way. Look in the mirror. Make sure that you pour something positive. I don't I don't get up. Every day I get up, first thing I do, man, is I, I thank God for allowing me another day. I thank God for the activities of my limbs. I thank God that I was able to turn around and step out my bed and give myself a shower and put my own clothes on and get ready for the next day. You know, it's been times, man, I went to work and I feel like I knew I wasn't going to make enough money. To, to to meet my needs but i still had to go you know i still have to take care of my family the whole nine yards right so and then you know when i get done saying my few little prayers you know i read a positive scripture you know i look at positive things you know my affirmation for the day is hey today is gonna be the best day ever you know and, and when i walk outside and got a car to get in i say thank god for a car to drive like some people don't even have a car to drive right so I do these things first and I pour positive. I speak those things that are not as though they were. So I would say to somebody in their early 20s who's entering into this industry, you know, be positive. You know, hey, we're going to do things as adult. If you choose to drink and smoke and do things as an adult, and I say those things because of the fact that it's so readily right now. And it's really interrupting so many people's peace in their lives until it's unbelievable, man. And then they want to blame everybody else for what they're going through versus saying, hey, look in the mirror, man. You know, if the police pull you over and you're doing things that are inappropriate, the first thing you want to say is, I'm black and you messing with me, this, that, and the other. But as soon as you raise down the window, they can smell what you've been doing. They can smell what you've been doing. Or you got a can of something or a bottle of something in your council and they can see that you drinking. So it's like, man... You know, stop putting the blame on everybody else. Get yourself together. Line yourself up. And when people sit in our chairs, we are doctors to them. We are lawyers to them. We are counselors to them. We are everything that people sit in our chair, whether it's a child or whether it's an adult, right? So when we when they sit in our chair, we have them. So I would say align yourself and do the best you can, being the best you can be, so that way you can be the best you need to be to your clients. Because guess what? You may not give the best service, but they know they're coming somewhere safe. It's clean. It's a great environment. They can learn something. There's some camaraderie. It's not a sweet, because I hate sweets. I'm sorry, I do. <laughs> and, um, and, and yeah, just slow down. Take your time, man. And you got your whole life ahead of you. And don't allow anything to interrupt your peace and get in the way of you being able to succeed in this industry. I love that. Speak life, speak life. Right. right? That's, Absolutely. It's amazing. So what's going on? So how are you, I don't know how to phrase this question. How are you, how, how is the credit, how's the credit union being used, you know, for the industry or for, or, or, or great question, like, like the music industry as well. Great question. So the rate, the way the credit music, the way the credit industry is, what, what, what are you guys as dominant? business and I'm, I'm i know but i'm asking you this so you can say it what is your dominant business I'm working behind the chair working behind the chair right so how many banks can you go in where that white collar bank president vice president ceo that has to come get a service by one of us what bank can you go in and say hey I need a loan because I want to open up a barbershop or I need a loan because I want to open up a barber school. How many banks do you know you can go in well, and do that? I'll use this as an example, Larry. And I think, I think it makes sense is that, um, is that we bank at, 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 uh, my business banks at PNC. Right. And when okay. it came to PPP time, like they were like, you know, make sure that you apply for PPP, make sure you apply for PPP. But then when it came, but then when it came to like, you know, shelling up the bread, there was no money left. Right. And I'm like, well, where'd all the money go? 
You know, like like if if it if it it's designed to keep me open, where did the money go? Oh well, you know, we have a we have a, we have a we we're with Harvard University or we're with like Walmart or we're with you know all these like big brands, and I'm like, well, but 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 they don't need the money, you know. So 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 that's so that's why I asked you that question in return because I wanted you to kind of give partial of my answer what the credit union is going to allow for us, right? So with the credit union, I made it a federal credit union. So that way, anybody in the United States who are in the hair care industry or the music industry can become a member because I have a record company as well. So they can become a member of our credit union. And when you become a member, so I'll solicit shops and, and schools and people in the industry so they can become members. And when you become a member, that means you have to put your money in my bank. That's one. Number two. I'll have products right so I'm going when I when 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 you invite me into your world I'm going to make sure that that your shop is aligned I'm going to make sure that you incorporate it I'm going to make sure all your paperwork is in order I'm going to make sure that things are in order so that way now when you're ready to open up a shop you have somebody who understands the dynamics of you opening up a shop and when you say hey man I need $100,000 to open up a shop no you do not all you need is this much money to open up a shop and you can get your equipment from here. You can build this out like that. So I'll be that person and I'll have retirement situations for them that they understand and I'll be able to help them. Same with the music industry, right? So my credit union is going to serve as a business a organization who understand the people who are coming in needing me versus a traditional financial institution where when you go in there, just like, 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 the reason I'm the first person that's doing what I'm doing as far as building this new school is because when I was trying to do this multi-million dollar deal to buy a building and build a building from the ground as well, the bank didn't understand what we did, right? Because they're not in this business. So so underwriters were saying, well, how much hair can he cut? And the people who put, took the loan before them, they said, hey, this guy has federal, like, federal funding he has like a four-year university like all of his taxes all of his paperwork everything is in order everything is together right so it allowed me to be able to sit at the table and have this conversation to even be able to get myself to where i am right now as it relates to them so my credit union is going to be able to bypass all of these traditional financial institutions so that way they can come to me and I understand what they need, I understand what they want and why they need and want it and how they can position themselves so that way now when you want to buy that house, now when you want to buy that car and when you want to start your business, I'm here to be able to loan you that money and help you to do that because of the fact that I've set you up to be successful versus you need 50000 but okay, I can loan you 10000 off your credit, but you're still $40,000 short, and I still cause you to go down a black hole anyway because I didn't give you all the money you needed because I didn't really understand your business, and I didn't really know how to help you. Because at the end of the day, if the banks, if you forfeit on that loan, the banks is just coming to get that equipment from you, and they don't want that. They go auction it off anyway. All they care about is that money that you need to pay them back. I, I love so it, that that you're willing to to say, you know what, uh, like a lot of financial institutions will give you as much as that that your your credit will allow. They don't mm -hmm. care how you spend it; they just want that interest back on that money. You're but like, they still want to know, but they still want to know what you want the money for. Now they they so you can't you can have good credit, you can have great credit. You can have all your ducks lined up in a row because I've walked into banks like that. I've walked into banks with my taxes. I've walked into bank with great credit. A lot of times, and it's, and it's unfortunate, but my skin color literally disallowed me to, to, to move forward in a lot of areas as well, right? And I had to press past that. That's part of the warfare. So at the end of the day, and, I, and I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I just wanted to throw that up in there as it related to, you know, even with having all of those things together, they just didn't give you the money that you needed. No, but I had to go to hard money lenders. <laughs> yeah. But what I loved about what you were saying is that you understand this industry. So, you know, if, if it's going to cost, you know, be 25,000, then you know, it's going to cost me 25,000. You're not trying to give me 50,000, you know what I mean? And, and, and I'm blowing that other 25. Exactly. And, and exactly. I ruined myself. Exactly.
Was that it? And I know where and I know where you can get your equipment from. I know that you can go to Home Depot and get a countertop for sixty dollars and get you a, a a cabinet or a pole to, to you know what I'm saying. Like I know all of these things to stop you from spending five thousand dollars on one station or ten thousand dollars for for a, a a a desk a reception desk at the front. You know I know better than that, right? That was my so, point. I was like, I love that because you're 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 saving them money. You're helping mm-hmm. them out. They're going to get the best advice and 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 everything for the for their money uh and 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 save they're, they're saving thousands of dollars that way i i, I and, and, and let's call it's and almost let's call like it the old, go ahead it's almost like the neighborhood banks where you know it's not just a loan but you actually have a partner in your in your business absolutely absolutely and let's call and let's call a duck a duck right everybody is so quick to want to open up their own barbershop or salon but a barbershop and salon don't make as much money as people think that people think that we do if you don't have at least eight chairs or better i feel like you you you're really defeated to me in my opinion if you don't have at least eight chairs or better you really don't position yourself to be able to make money if you're not at your shop whether you charge a booth rent or a commission right so my point being is, is that a lot of people open up barbershops and think that if i open up a barbershop and i've talked so many people off the ledge who not even a business yeah man i want to spend fifty thousand dollars and open up a barbershop do you cut hair do you do hair no i don't don't do that because it's not what you think that it is right so we don't make as much money by having a shop as people think we it's the individual operator that really makes the money right so You know, it's not what people think it is. So I'm here to help people to start their own corporations. You can be a one man shop. You can be cutting hair in somebody else's shop, but you can have your own corporation. You can put all your money in your corporate account and you can pay yourself a salary through paychecks, through paylocity or through your accountant where they're taking out your taxes for you. They're doing a 401k for you. You can do all of that. And you're just one employee for your corporation. I'm here to teach people how to do those things. I'm here to teach people how to set yourself up. So if you can't work, you got Aflac insurance, you know, you got uh, uh, life insurance policies, teaching people how to put it up in there so you can call and borrow money against that. Whatever the case may be, that's what my credit union is going to serve as in order to help you for when you get ready to retire, you have something to retire to versus it being a rat race for the rest of your life. Larry, do you have like a bank manager or do you have somebody that's managing the credit union or do so, 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 so I will, so I will have, I can hire anybody I would like to hire, um, as it relates to, you know, um, managing the credit union and all of that kind of stuff. So, and of course it would be somebody in the financial, you know, industry who, who can properly be like a, you know, I'm, of course I'm the president, but of course I would need like a, a vice president or, you know, uh, secretaries and things like that, because it has to align with, with the national credit union. Everything has to align. So there's policies and procedures and processes and stuff like that, that I have to marry myself to, because, you know, I'm dealing with the, the FDIC and if you will, and all of that kind of stuff. So how do you like, how do you even like go about finding someone like that? You know, like, like a bank manager or, or whatever. Um, people people who went to school for for that stuff. It, it's the same way that you would that somebody would apply to be, you know, a, a, a bank manager for a Chase or a PNC or you know Bank of America. It's the it's the same way. You know, it's just your choice and who you feel like is susceptible to you know having that position is is pretty much it. Yeah, what, what, will your bank manager be African American? Uh, it, it don't matter to me. It, it it doesn't matter to me. You know what I'm saying? It would be whoever can get the job done. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, me, I'm, I'm multicultural. I have multicultural schools. You know, I'm, I'm not with somebody who's African-American or Asian or, you know, Hispanic, whatever that looks like, man. You know what I'm saying? I want somebody who can get the job done. That's it. Who's not biased and who's going to be fair. That's it. That's amazing. Hey, I don't want, I, I don't mean to take us back, but, but it, it, just a question just came up. Who's like, who are your instructors in, in the, um in the, uh for the barber schools in, in, in the prison system? Are they other inmates? That's a, gr- or are you bringing that's a great question. That, that That's a great question. So I bring, so I really make it where one, one of the, so when I first opened up my barber schools, of course, you know, I was instructing, I was running front desk. I was uh, clinic floor teacher. I was doing it all, cutting my clients, you know, I was doing everything. But, and then a few years later, you know, it's like, it was hard getting instructors because, you know, how how much can you really pay an instructor 
versus what they can make behind the chair. So that was really difficult. So what I started doing is, is that I start, you know, telling my students like, hey, man, you know, one day you're going to want this instructor's license. So I think that you need to go straight from finishing barber school and go right into becoming an instructor. So that way you won't get in the shop and get too inundated where you don't have time to come back and get your instructor's license. So I would have them get it simultaneously. So that way, if they chose to be an instructor for one of my schools, they can do it, which leads me to now I don't have problems with getting instructors because everybody want to come work at my institutions. Right. And also um, I have them anybody like I have a lead instructor. So I have that person that's in charge of all of my instructors for all of my schools. We have weekly meetings. Um, they make sure everything is aligned. What goes for one school, go for the others and also the prison system. So if I need somebody, I was the instructor in there every day. But also, um, I have some of my instructors at my schools to pretty much do their background checks and do stuff like that. So that way they can be a part of my juvenile um, penal institutions, along with the Cook County Jail when need be. But you also have to give an account that the jail is not a place that an average person can just knock on the door and come in and say, hey, you know, so one of the ways I was able to get in there is because they're cutting hair in there anyway. Right. They're cutting hair and they're doing hair in there anyway. I just came and put my name on the on the, the, the jail and brought some structure to it. So even in there, I have guys once they finish with their their barber, um, their barber hours, I have them go straight into getting their instructor hours. So then they become instructors inside the barbershops, if you will, you know, anyway, even though the barbershop is not always open every day inside the jail. You know what I'm saying? So they're going to cut hair whether I'm there or not. It's just that my license brings structure to it. So if that answers your question, that's how I'm able to have my structures and stuff inside of the jails. How, are they, I, I, I could, we could do a whole podcast on just the, 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 the prison uh, schools there. Cause I, I find it fascinating. You know, I find just the whole, the whole process of it fascinating. Like you said, like you were, you're one of, you know, you, you could bring clippers in and no one else can. Well, how are you teaching barbering if you can't have, you know, like it just, right. But it's all it's all crazy, dude. You are just a, a a fascinating, fascinating person. And like I'm just like, like Tony said, like there could be a hundred of us. And like I think I'm busy. And then I listen to what everything that you're up to, and I'm like, <laughs> I, I, I got a lot more work to do, man. Like I got too much time, man. I feel like I got too much time. Exactly. <laughs> I, I, I feel lazy in you know in this conversation, Larry. How can um if if people want to reach out to you, get a hold of you, do all that? How can they find help, you? sponsored, whatever. whatever. Um, so I do have a non-for-profit. Um, I'll start there. I have a non-for-profit. So if people, you know, want to donate, they can go to datafoundationinc.org. Uh, that's for the credit union. That's for all of the stuff I'm doing inside of the jails. You know, I do free services on a regular basis at all of my locations every fourth Tuesday of the month. You know, we go and do veteran stand downs and all that kind of stuff. So datafoundationinc.org is my non-for-profit. But if you want to find me on social media, I would love if everybody will follow me. My personal page and my business page is on um, Instagram and Facebook or whatever. So Instagram is um, Larry Roberts Jr. Um, on Instagram and on Facebook, same thing. You know, you, you'll see my face on there. And then my businesses are Larry's Barber Colleges. And then and we can kind of go from there. So uh, you can find me on there. And if you're interested in going to barber school, um, you can go to Larry's Barber College dot com. And they can get all the information on there. We do have financial aid for those that qualify. Our school code is 041176. You can apply for financial aid. Uh, and we have it at uh, at most of our locations. And, you know, we're working on getting them, getting the credit at our other locations so we can have financial aid there. But they can find me there. So, so y'all, please follow me. So everything's named Larry Roberts. Is it going to be like Larry Roberts Credit Union? So it's actually – so. So my corporations, and, and this, I'm glad that you went there, too, because a lot of people are quick to name their corporations after, like, some goofy name, you know, like 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 Bobo's, you know, Goofy Barbershop, which I feel like you, you, you do yourself a disservice because, like, one of my corporation names is LSE Enterprises, Inc., right? So I use the acronym. But then I'm doing business as Larry's Barber College 1. I'm doing business as Larry Barber College 2. But the corporation is still my hub. So if Larry's Barber College 2 was to shut down, I don't have to shut down my whole corporation. But had I named it Larry's Barber College Incorporated, then let's say if I wanted to open up a McDonald's or a Burger King, 
you know, it wouldn't it wouldn't sound right if I say Larry's Barber College Incorporated doing business as a McDonald's. So you use a name that's kind of subtle and then you do business as all of these other companies up under your corporation. Right. So, you know, I have Larry's Barber College is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, whatever. But then I have LBC Properties, which is another corporation that I have Barbara Maximus, which is my shop that I have inside of Walmart. So I have Maximus Man products that's up under there, which is my man, the hair care products. I have um, Astro Kicks and Goods that's up under LBC Properties. Then I have Data Foundation, which my credit union is up under. So Data Foundation is my not-for-profit because remember I said the credit union has to be opened up under the not-for-profit. But then I have doing business as LBC Federal Credit Union. So that's the name of the credit union, LBC Federal Credit Union, which is the acronym is Larry's Barber College Federal Credit Union. <laughs> I love it. Larry, wow. once again, dude, thanks for hanging out with us. And, you know, thanks for uh, I thank you guys for having me. I really do. I appreciate it. How you found an hour for us, I'll never know. But I appreciate you being yeah. here, man, for real. Yeah, and, and and if we can spread the love any way that you can see that we can fit into your in, into anything that you're doing, man, you have you have our ear. You have our podcast. We're here for sure. you, brother. Or, Are you guys going to be at Bronner Brothers? We're not going to be yeah. at Bronner Brothers because, like, okay. we open up the podcast. We uh, we have our big event uh, April thirteenth, and okay. I know like that's a that's forever for you, but for us, you know, it makes us pretty busy. And and we well, do man, like whatever y'all want me to be on, let me know. I'm I'm here for it. I really appreciate you guys' ear. Let me on your platform, and um, whatever I can do, uh, just let me know. I'll come on whenever you need me to, or do whatever I need to do for you guys. I really appreciate it. That's awesome. Larry, we'll definitely see you at ABS. Um, let's definitely make some time to, to cut it up a little bit. Um, and then, you know, let, let's, let's get some hang time there in Chicago. Yes, sir. So we okay. Love, we love that city. Mr. Larry Roberts Jr., thank you very, very much for joining us on your thank you. Four day off. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, share it with friends, give us a rating and drop a review to listen to all the latest podcasts. Please subscribe from your favorite podcast outlet and to stay connected on and off the show. You can follow us at hair Street on Instagram and all other social media platforms. Thanks again. And we'll see you next time. Peace and love.